We also went to Naples. We went to um, uh, Mallorca. We spent two days in Barcelona. And Barcelona was super cool. And I was uh, most excited for Barcelona because I wanted to go to a magic shop. Not just any magic shop. The oldest magic shop in the world. It opened in 1881. And it was... Uh, um, so yeah, when we got in, we were two days in Barcelona. And it turns out that the reason we were... Well, I don't know if it's the reason we were there two days. Uh, but... But it was good that we were because the day we arrived was a festival. Um, it was uh, kind of like their, almost like their Mardi Gras. And um, everything was closed. So it was good that we had time to go back. And. Okay. Put you here. Put you here. It's not really the right place, but that's okay. Uh, so we went back the next day and they were open and I wanted to get the Spanish edition of a book called Monica and so I walked into the shop I wasn't expecting them to be able to speak English so I was expecting to either rely on Chihuahua Power G who is conversationally fluent in Spanish and even though they speak Catalan um, everyone seemed to get seemed to be able to understand uh, Chihuahua Power G pretty well and um, so we didn't really have any problem communicating or I was expecting to have to rely on Google Translate. And the Google Translate app is freaking fantastic if you haven't played with it. Um, it can You can type in, of course, phrases and words to be translated and then it displays it on the screen. If you turn the screen horizontal, it displays the phrase really big so it's easy for people to read. You can also speak into it and it translates it and it'll speak the translation back and it will it has this mode where you can like it'll follow a conversation and if you're speaking in two languages it'll translate the english to catalan and it'll translate the catalan back to english which is pretty freaking cool um we used it a few times and we noticed a lot of the taxi drivers had it so that they could communicate with people like us who did not speak the language um, and so that was that was pretty cool. Uh, so I walked in and uh, Mnemonica, the book I was looking for, is written by a magician named Juan Tamaris. And he's kind of legendary. Um, he's, he's a well-known magician worldwide, but he's, he's basically, he's legendary in Spain. He's a Spanish magician. Um, he's from Madrid. And he... Uh, so he wrote this book. It's a really important book, and I have it in English, but I'm I've never been super happy with it, and I kind of felt that it was probably the translation. So I I wanted to get the Spanish the the Spanish original, and I probably could find a place to order it online and all that, but I figured, hey, if I'm going to be in Spain, it would seem to be a kind of a perfect opportunity to get it. And, uh, and they had it, not only did they have it, they had like this leather bound two volume uh, version of it, um, special edition numbered. And it comes with a DVD that's signed by Juan Tamaris himself. Uh, so that was, that was pretty crazy and pretty uh, special find. It's now kind of a treasured part of my library. Uh, and I will spend time going through it and, and going through and sort of reading and doing my best to sort of muddle my way through translation um, with parts of the book that I feel are uh, particularly difficult to get through so we'll see um, but that was that was that we had um, a bit of a security uh, issue on our flight back uh, we were on the plane, we got loaded, we were getting taxiing to the runway. Okay. Hi. These guys now want to murder my face. 
So let me go down here so they'll despawn and everything should be fine. Hopefully. See how that works. Uh, anyway, um, so <laughs> we're taxiing to the runway and then the plane stops and the pilot comes on and says that there's a medical issue. One of the passengers is sick and does not want to take the flight. Does not want to stay on the flight. And honestly, if I was super sick, I wouldn't want to be on a 13-hour flight either. But then I realized this could be a security issue because they need to get his bag off. Because what they don't want is they don't want somebody checking a bag with a bomb and then getting off the plane and then having the plane fly with his bomb in his bag and then exploding somewhere over the Atlantic Ocean. So, um, and I was concerned that they were going to, I haven't been out here in a while. Uh, I was concerned that they were going to pull back into a gate, make us all get off the plane, go claim our baggage, go back through security, recheck our bags and then reload the plane. And I figured at that point we'd be super late and we were going to be getting in at like 10 PM anyway. So I'm like, oh, we're not even, we're going to be like delayed until the next day. Um, fortunately, uh, when they stopped the plane and they didn't stop at a gate, they pulled up stairs to meet the plane and there were a couple of police officers who met the person who got off the plane. Um, he did not look particularly sick, uh, but you never know. Um, I mean, the, the sick thing could have been a cover for, hey, somebody really wants to get off the plane, or we have somebody on the plane that the police don't want to let fly to America. Um, so they, they got him, and then they pulled his bag off the plane. They were able to pull it out. Um, they had to unload a lot of the baggage, I think. And then... Uh, and then reload it so it took a little while we were delayed about an hour and a half but we did get then we did get underway and everything ended up being just fine uh we were a little late of course but it was a 787 dreamliner and those planes fly super high for a commercial airliner they fly really high and at the altitude they're flying when you're flying 600 miles an hour you're pretty that's pretty close to the speed of sound so not exactly like a supersonic plane but flies pretty fast and uh, the I think they were able to make up some time although they had to fly around a couple storms I think um, so uh, so we didn't fly straight back exactly but anyway, that was um, that was pretty much the trip. It was pretty good. Uh, I had three videos scheduled for the time that I was gone and right as I returned because we returned on Monday, which was the day that uh, <clears throat> um, I think I scheduled videos for all the days. Well, we'll I'll double check that, but doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm back. I'm recording new episodes. Um, Barb Mix Things is out on, at a conference right now, I think, or sh getting back shortly. I'm not sure. But I'm pretty much feeling ready to, uh, to update the server. I should build a better house around this. Not that anyone ever comes out here, just... Or at least light up all this area. Is that a taiga over there? Am I going to get lost if I fly too far away? Probably. Let's find out. <clears throat> so, those shulker boxes. There's a roofed forest here. Interesting. Uh, the shulker boxes. Uh, we're collecting the rest of the materials I'm going to need to build the carrot farms uh, in the pyramid. 
So I'll, I'll start finish collecting those. I would be doing that while I'm talking here, but I, I need to look up the list of what I need. So um, that'll that'll go quicker if I do it up uh, off camera. So I'll do that and then I'll start building those out. But I think I have all the villagers that I need out there. I need to double check. But, um, and that was kind of the last thing, but I think some of those villagers are not farmers. Um, so it may be, I don't know. I'm sure I'll have to deal with things a little bit when we update the server. But, um, I think Eric Hulk is looking forward to updating the server because there are design thing that he wants to do in uh, Planet Hulk that requires some of the new slabs and stairs. So I want to get it updated and I think I've checked everything. So we should be okay to do that. So I will check with everyone else to make sure that they're okay with the timing. Stop the server, back it up and uh, get ready and, and do the update and then go check things. And next video will probably be me checking out things after the 1.14 which I won't have to do too extensively because I did do testing on the test server but that's uh I think that's it um anything else I've had kind of a busy couple weeks oh. um <clears throat> sort of hosted events called PD weekend which is uh Mostly focused on a program called Pure Data, which is an audio, audio and video manipulation generation programming language. It kind of does things a little differently. It's what's called a patching language. So you have a bunch of boxes on the screen, and you get to you drag connections between them, and then everything flows through those connections in the order of the boxes and all that good stuff. Uh, so we did that at Crash Space and also down in San Diego. I was kind of a participant down in San Diego. And we had some people, we had people from all over the world who were, uh, came out and uh, came to the, the weekend. It was pretty cool. Um, but that was like, right. I mean, the, you know, we got back on a Monday and then that Friday was down to San Diego. And um, so it was kind of tiring. I haven't had a a full like restful weekend um and i um this weekend uh today wasn't overly scheduled i went and saw joker which i really liked it's a very dark and brooding and challenging film and not everyone's gonna like it and not everyone does like it and that's totally fine um Hello, Magma Cubes and Wither Skeleton. So, <clears throat> we, uh, so I went and saw that and then kind of did some work around the house. And, uh, no blazes, no pigmen. Hello, dude. No skull for me, huh? Okay. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to try to sleep in a little bit, which I haven't been doing a lot of. Uh, and then I've got a... There's a magician. Um... Ah, there's a magician I saw on Friday at the Magic Castle um, named Michael Mirth. Who I enjoyed seeing quite a lot, and he's doing a lecture on Sunday. He's doing a lecture tomorrow. Um, so that is what I'm planning on doing. Come at me, bro. Um... <clears throat> Uh, and I saw him on Friday because I went to lunch, Friday lunch at the castle. 
which is a cool thing that that uh, I <clears throat> that happens uh, every week and um, I went because uh, I got uh, I got informed that while I was out I, I was uh, part of a staff reduction so I got laid off while I was on vacation uh, they didn't bother telling me until over a week after I got back um, because they didn't want to ruin my vacation I guess I don't know uh, so uh, so my last day is going to be January 3rd unless they change their mind which might well happen um, or not and I may have to find another job so I'll get a nice little separate package so I'm not super worried um, and I have some savings built up so um, I can get by for a while without uh, without having a job but um, a little frustrating uh, by the by the time I let go <clears throat> my time of my last day I will have been at deluxe for 21 years um, <clears throat> so I, they're trying to reduce costs and uh, uh, I guess I became a I became a, uh, a target <laughs> um, so you know whatever it's fine so I uh, and I haven't been as busy lately as I have at times in the past although the last week got a little busy uh, so but my Friday was pretty free so I said you know what screw it I'm gonna take a long lunch and uh, so that's what I did and I went to the Magic Castle and had lunch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I think I'm short of it. I think I'm short of a farmer. Yeah, because there's eight and nine. Okay, so I have that to do before the update. I've spent all the time doing that. Very good. Um, so yeah, I went and did that, and on Fridays at the lunchtime, usually one of the performers who is booked during the week uh, performs in the close-up gallery. And uh, Michael Mirth, he was really good. The, the tricks he did were, um, you know, somewhat run-of-the-mill standard tricks. They were good, and he's technically very good. Um, but his performance style was really impressive, and... Uh, I want to go see what he has to say in his lecture. Um, he was just very natural and um, very personable, and he didn't make dumb jokes, and <laughs> it was pretty good. Um, so I think he's uh, he's quite he's a very good performer. So I'm curious to see what he has to to do cover in his lecture. And he's got uh, he said he'd be showing a few of the tricks from his close-up act um, and there's one he does with the four queens and four glasses and uh, like wine glasses and if, if he if he covers that in the lecture I'll be happy because that was kind of my favorite trick of his but anyway um, there was that oh and the other magic related thing was um, there's a magician named Caroline Raven uh, who she does uh, mostly like playing card reviews on her YouTube channel um, she's a Swedish magician and um, and there aren't uh, you know there aren't a ton of why is there a hole there is it important that there's a hole there I don't think so Put a slab over the top of this. That could be a full block. I don't have a full block on me, but it could be. Interesting. Um, yeah, so uh, when we booked the cruise, when we started researching, it did not seem like they were going to have a magician on board, which was surprising because it's very typical for cruise ships to have a magician performing at least one night and often two. And... It was kind of like, oh, this is a different ship. We're doing things different. We don't have magicians. And then I guess they decided they wanted to start booking magicians. So 
shortly before we got on the boat, we learned, I learned that Caroline Raven was going to be performing on our ship. So I got to see her perform, which was very exciting because I've been following her for a while, but I never, uh, she did a TEDx talk, which was pretty good. Um, and and, and I, I watched her YouTube channel with all of her playing card reviews, uh, but I'd never seen her perform live. And I'd never seen a full, like a video of a full show. So that was, uh, that was very cool that I got to actually see her perform. Uh, so I was happy about that. Um, so that was uh, uh, the other magic related news of the, of the time, of the trip. So anyway, um, I think that's it. How long have I been recording? Oh, much longer than I planned. I will probably have to cut this into two parts. Um, just so it's not interminably long. So I didn't really pause anywhere there, did I? Okay, well, we'll figure it out. Um, editing is always an interesting challenge. But uh, I think that's it for now. This is Theron. It's been a Minecraft LAN party. And I will see you next time. All right. Bye.